take a closer look at the unarmed man. Surprised to recognize the uniform of King Kaelin's honor guard, a memory comes to you for alongside the man in Osagar. Take a closer look at the guards. Guards wear a uniform, Ban Lurin, minor lord well known for little loved of fluidity in his alliances. Join the fray. <laughs> Up close, the man's face is unmistakable. You remember him as Elric Marangain, a member of Callan's Callan's honor guard at Oscar, a closer confidant of the king. Thank you. I, I didn't expect the band's men to notice my escape so quickly. I tried to hide here in the woods, but there wasn't time. And now I'm a dead man. What do you mean there wasn't time? You were there in Ostagar. You know how things went. For me, it was either this, or die in some dark spawn's belly, or, or be hung as a deserter. Yes, I recognize your face. You were there with the Grey Wardens, one of Duncan's new recruits. I was to guard the king. He was my friend, understand? Maker. All that time in Ban Loren's prison. And I couldn't stop thinking about all they suffered that one dark night at Ostagar. It's not your fault they died. I know. Even had Logain's men not turned their backs on us, the Darkspawn were too many. Even Kalen, for all his bravado, knew there would be no victory at Ostagar. The king entrusted me with the key to the royal arms chest. If anything were to happen to him, he said, it was vital I deliver it to the Wardens. Do you still have this key? The Maker has a sense of humor, doesn't he? I suppose it's for the best, however. Had I kept it, it would be in Ban Loren's hands by now. Why am I not surprised? Is there someone else we should be bringing back from the brink of death instead? I was afraid. I thought I would lose it on the battlefield, so I stashed it in the camp. Please, it's probably still there. You don't think the Darkspawn found it? I hope not. Would they know how to work the lock even if they did? The key's behind a loose stone at the base of a statue. I'll draw a map for you. So you'll know where to search. You'll be taking me along, won't you? And win as well, I suspect. Call me sentimental, but we left behind some darkspawn that really deserve a drubbing. It is vital that the King's documents do not fall into the wrong hands. As for Marek's sword, it is too powerful to be poured at by those monsters. Same for the King's other arms and armor. And... And if you happen to find Caelan's body, see it off. He was our King. He shouldn't be left to rot amidst the Darkspawn's filth. <sighs> oh, I fell. Are you alright? For a moment there, I thought I was... I thought it was all over. Need to rest, that's all. I... I will explain everything when we are back at camp. Now is not the time.
Alistair, are you all right? Oh, they left him here to rot. We need to do something. He's of royal blood and deserves it higher. He was a good man, who hoped too much, and died too young. He deserves what little honor we can afford to grant him. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You mean when you collapsed in the battle? You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. Remember my apprentice, Petra? She encountered a demon in the tower. It would have killed her had I not intervened. I saved her life that day, but I did not survive that encounter with the demon. But you're standing right here. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly, but gently, as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. That's an amazing story. The Fade contains spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. And we will make the best of that time. Yes, that we will. Here. Look at this. Do you know what this is? That's Rose. I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. That's a nice sentiment. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. Thank you, Alistair. That's a lovely thought. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking, here I am doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since your joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I'm not interested, Alistair. I'm sorry. Well, you can't blame me for trying, can you? Just forget I said anything. We have better things to do right now, anyhow. The stars are out. There is so beauty to be found in this world. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. 
that whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? Tell me the story. A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her, and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle, and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love, and beseeched the guards to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea, that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. I'll never look at the stars the same way again. This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? Few loves are so powerful. I think I would be lucky to experience an emotion even half as pure and true as Elindra's love. We should all be so lucky. The world gets lonely too quickly if there is no one to share it with. You've seen and touched and dressed his ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth. The remains of the Maker's Chosen. It's quite remarkable, yes. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. I'm just so fought for everyone. She belongs to us all. Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. Looking for little old me? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated, and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle, and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. You were young, it's understandable. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? I came to talk, nothing more. Oh. How interesting. Speak then. You have come far, and I am nothing if not hospitable. Is it true that you intend to take Morrigan's body? <laughs> oh, I do like that. Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. 
Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? I need Morrigan. I have no choice in this. Choice. There is power in choices, as there is in lies. I shall give you one of each. Morrigan wishes my grimoire. Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. You think she will believe that? We believe what we want to believe. It's all we ever do. What happens to you? I go. Perhaps I surprise Morrigan one day. Or I may simply watch. It would be interesting to see what she does with her freedom. Enlightening, even. Would you give an old woman that? What do I get out of it? <laughs> you get to keep her for a time. No, forget it. Shame. What will it be then? I take the grimoire for myself. Oh, ho. how interesting. I'd like to see the look on her face when she realizes it. But you must earn what you take. I would have it no other way. <laughs> 